For the moment we are offshore the Belgian coast, about 40 kilometers. In the background you can see the offshore switchyard. It's a, a platform owned by Elia, where the, the power uh, generated by the offshore wind farms is collected and transmitted further towards the onshore grid. We are out in the Belgian North Sea to undertake our annual inspection of the MOG, alias Plug at Sea. The jacket of the switching platform was successfully installed at the end of 2018 and is anchored to the seabed via four support pillars. These are embedded in the seabed, which lies 60 meters below sea level. During the inspection process, our staff verify both the general condition of the MOG and how the marine life around the MOG is getting on. The brownish things you can see is actually our tubes of a very small tube-building amphipod that's a small crustacean. We have seen some, yeah, some quite nice changes, I would say, that is some commercial species that are attracted that find shelter and food in there. And now we're talking about cod, but also potentially uh, pouting. We also see some species that used to be pretty rare uh, along our coast that now find a place, a home in Belgian waters. Of course, when we talk about rare, we talk about locally rare. It's not that the species are rare at the regional scale, it's simply the habitat was not present. And now we're offering some sort of an, an artificial rocky shore, you could say. So this is how these species come in. Now that it's clear that our seas will be the power plants of the future, increasing attention is being paid to the interaction between offshore infrastructure and its impact on the marine environment. Until now, we have mostly focused on the effects of our infrastructure and the compensation measures we can take after it has been constructed. Our attention is now shifting to thinking about how our infrastructure can actually encourage life underwater to flourish. This approach is called Nature Inclusive Design and it involves us working with experts to make sure our infrastructure is built in such a way that it has a positive effect on marine life from the outset. In Belgium, this approach has been adopted for the construction of our first energy island. This artificial island will include links to new offshore wind farms and will act as a landing point for additional interconnectors. In the older days, we were rather thinking about mitigating the bad, as we call it, so negative impacts had to be mitigated uh, to the maximum extent possible. Nowadays, we also see quite a lot of attention that is given to promoting the goods. That is, okay, those aspects people consider good, again, context-dependent, may be strengthened by taking particular actions inside offshore wind farms. You can increase the biodiversity for fish community around your installation by ensuring that they have shelter uh, in the score protection well, due to the sand where they can dig in and also extra food supply due to the organisms growing on the construction like crabs. The importance of encouraging life underwater to flourish was also discussed at the Baltic Sea Conference, which 50 Hertz hosted in Berlin in September. 50 Hertz is working with the World Wildlife Fund on a project which aims to restore damaged seabeds to their original condition. So to restore the reef, we actually take big boulders, so geogenic stones, and place them back into uh, the Baltic Sea. And these are already defined by the area where historical stone pinching took place. So basically what we need is these stones back into place and therefore the ecosystem of the reef can restore at, the, at this very place. The use of offshore infrastructure for multiple purposes is also being considered. Offshore electricity infrastructure can be combined with sea farming activities for example. There is lots of space. You can use that to produce fish, to produce algae, to produce muscle and do high protein stuff or also produce very special ingredients that then can be used in the formation of other products that are onshore needed but produced offshore far away, out of the way, in protected areas. The sea hasn't revealed all its secrets yet, but through smart design, climate action can be linked to biodiversity. This beneficial approach is one we at Alia Group fully support. <laughs>